The last Sega console came as a compact gray box filled with hope. Filled with dreams of a better future? A new experience ready to bring us Sega kids back to our first love. For a brief moment in time, that's what it was. A new horizon filled with amazing arcade games and never before seen graphics on a console. Dreamcast brought us our first real 3D Sonic game. First person shooters that matched up the PC gaming. The rebirth of gold standard Sega sports games that we missed on the Sega Saturn. New adventure games so big you could get lost for hours in its fully immersive 3D world. Most of all, it gave us confidence in the console maker that was responsible for many of us for falling in love with the hobby we still love today. The Sega Dreamcast may have had a short lifespan and a future filled with empty hypotheticals, but we are not going to talk about that today. Today, we are going to look back and relive the greatest years of the Sega Dreamcast from a fan's perspective. The build-up, the hype, the games, and the experience, and all that came along with a console that was meant to bring us Sega kids back home. Sega unveiled the Dreamcast in May of 1998 at the New Challenge Contest in Japan. Needless to say, many of us Sega fans were a little gun-shy. This is because the Sega Saturn was a console with a lot of hype, and many of us felt burned that the console never lived up to the hype. We figured as a successor to a console, the Sega Genesis, that gave Nintendo a real run for its money, Saturn would have had a much better shot. This clearly wasn't the case. The reluctance carried over to the Dreamcast. That was until E3 in 1999 when Sega showed off launch titles such as Soul Calibur, Ready to Rumble Boxing, and more of their 18 launch games set to release with the new console. At this point before launch it became clear what Sega was going to be offering. First time 128-bit experience that graphically blew the Sony PS1 and Nintendo 64 of the water. We have got your sneak peek at the video game of, well, this is the one you're going to be hounded for by your kids for Christmas time. What we're talking about is the Sega's new Dreamcast player. Take a look at what they're going to be offering. Brand new video games with graphics like you have never seen before. It is the most TV-like that you'll ever see. This is something never been done before. Before launch, Sega spent a whopping $100 million dollars on advertising and spent time mending relationships with retailers from the blunders of the Saturn to make sure there was not a repeat launch disaster come launch time. Between seeing the games and how Sega was willing to make things right by seeing their own mistakes of the past, it gave us Sega fans huge hope. And as Sega pumped out comical and weird It's Thinking advertisements, it became pretty apparent Sega was back and ready to make an unbelievable splash. All this effort proved the payoff. Sega fans had a newfound hope, and a record-breaking 300,000 units had been pre-ordered in the United States alone. Let's get ready to rumble! On September 1st, 1999, or 9999 as we all remember it, it was time to launch the Sega Dreamcast in North America and we were about to see if all the marketing money spent and promises made would pay off. Expected to do really well. Sales that are expected to bring in $45 million, and that's just today. Dreamcast will bring in more in one day, and even the hit movie Star Wars The Phantom Menace made on its opening day. 
Sega, who had struggled to garnish interest in previous consoles in the USA since the Genesis, had finally had a successful North American launch in over a decade. The Dreamcast broke records by selling over 225,000 units in its first day. This in part was due to a few reasons. Besides its massive marketing budget, the Sega Dreamcast launched with over 18 titles, one of which was a return of a flagship Sonic game, which the previous Sega console was desperately missing. It was also the first 6-gen console out of the gate, while Sony's PlayStation 2 and Nintendo's GameCube, still codenamed Dolphin, was still a ways away and gamers were eager to get a next-gen experience that at the time only Sega was providing. The Sega Dreamcast launched with over 18 titles. While it would take forever to go through each one, I'll briefly touch on ones I feel were the most impactful to me. Number 1. Sonic Adventure As we all know, a Sonic flagship was missing on the Sega Saturn, and it was an emptiness every Sega fan felt who owned a Sega Saturn. Sonic Adventure was a new, fully 3D Sonic game with massive open world in which we had never seen before. I remember the first time I played Sonic Adventure and hearing the sound of the splash from entering and exiting the water experiencing the visual lighting and graphics that were absolutely mind-blowing. Even today I find myself regularly replaying through the first stage to re-experience that feeling I had the first time I played it. Number 2, Soul Calibur. <laughs> Visually stunning. Gameplay that holds to this day, this game was and is an absolute masterpiece. Up to this point, the best looking fighting game for me, at the time, was Tekken 3. And Soul Calibur made it look like a muddy mess. This was the first time I could see hair on characters sway in the wind. And parts of the character's outfit move completely independently from the character. This game was like nothing else for a fighting game on a console at the time. This victory strengthens the soul of Shanhua. You win! Shanhua! Versus Maxi. Final battle. Fight. Look at that. This victory strengthened the soul of Sanfa. You win! Number 3, NFL 2K. The Sega Saturn lacked any decent football game, which was a disappointment considering how great the Genesis was. But with the launch and first entry of the 2K series, Sega immediately redeemed themselves. The first time I saw this game was actually at a mall kiosk. I literally thought it looked like real TV. That's not just because graphically it looks so much better than the PS1 or N64, but it was more than that. It was the overall presentation of the game that we had never seen before in a sports title. The way the camera moved around the screen, and the way the players got up and adjusted their gloves and face masks as they walked back to the huddle. For the first time since the Genesis, it was clear that with this new 2K series, sports games were a reason to buy the Sega Dreamcast. 81 catches the ball just outside his end zone. Trips. He gets an average return. 
return and then gets hauled down. Bettis, powered ahead through the hole the lineman made for him. Fantastic job by the O-line, huh, Peter? You gotta love that. Ball at the 44-yard line. Number four, cart flag to flag. This game was impactful to me because I loved Sega arcade games in the 90s, especially racing games. While flag to flag is still a lesser known title to many, it was the first time I had felt like there was that true Sega arcade experience back again. The sounds, look, and presentation felt as if I had an arcade in my house. Sure, the Sega Saturn sometimes brought that feeling with certain games, but, but not like this. Visually, this was also the best looking racing game at the time. There are 14 other launch titles for the Sega Dreamcast in North America. I'd love to hear your favorites in the comments section below. Maybe we'll do a uh, Sega Dreamcast launch titles video in the future. For a full year, Sega stood atop as king of the hardware market. While Sony still pumped out great games for the Sony PlayStation, and Nintendo 64 continued to put out games, they all paled in comparison to what the Sega Dreamcast had. The newness of the 5th gen had ran dry, and Sega was a full generation ahead of the competition. Dreamcast was even getting better ports if you wanted to play the best version of Resident Evil 2 or Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, and you were doing it on Sega's new console. The sports genre was reborn. We saw more 2K games, NFL 2K1, NHL 2K, NBA 2K, all atop their classes. RPGs were changing and looked better than ever. Fantasy Star Online looked beautiful and you could play with people across the world. I remember Skies of Arcadia looking so good, I bought it not even knowing it was an RPG at the time. Sega was bringing the arcade back to the home, with titles like Virtual Fighter 3TB, House of the Dead 2, and a brand new Daytona game. We got Sonic Adventure 2 and brand new games like Jet Set Radio. The hardware offered new possibilities. As mentioned previously, for the first time, we can go online and play with friends. Sega was pretty forward-thinking at the time. I remember not really thinking much about it and didn't buy the console to go online, but when you think back at it, it's really interesting to see how Sega was really the first to pioneer this concept and offer a solution to console gamers. The virtual memory units, or VMUs as they were more commonly called, allowed us to take our save games with us and even offer some mini-games and added HUD to certain games, making them a little more interactive. The four-player feature gave us the same party experience the Nintendo 64 was boasting over the PlayStation. Some of my favorite memories of the Dreamcast was playing Choo Choo Rocket in four-player Quake Deathmatch with friends. At the time, we didn't know it, but we were on borrowed time. The time between 9999 and the next year and a half was the best time to be a Sega fan. As a Sega kid, it was nice to have our last moment in the sun for that brief time. One day, we turned our Dreamcast off for the last time, thinking Sega was back. A future filled with endless possibilities and a resurrection of our favorite brand, only to find out the next day, Sega would be no more. 
No more consoles. Sega had given us the best two years it could give us before leaving us. It's tough to think about what could have been. What kind of games we would have had for the Sega Dreamcast at the console's full potential. But I'd rather remember the good stuff. And I hope this video helps you remember it too. The Sega Dreamcast was the best send-off we could have ever receive as Sega kids. There's a lot that could have been done differently, but that's for another video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspires you to fire up Sonic Adventure one more time and think about the last great days of Sega. I'm the Retro Bro. I'll see you on the next video.